we're going to have a policy which results in billions, and we're not talking about small amounts of money here, billions of pounds of public money being spent and massive regulation on the activities of citizens, then we've got to be sure that the, 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 the evidence on which that policy and those policies are based is sound. And since it is not sound, then we should not be as dogmatic about the kind of policies which we are pursuing. It isn't about saving the planet, it's about saving our skins. I think to put it on the back burner for a few years would be really dumb. Um, and it's also urgent uh, in the sense that um, Northern Ireland, like the whole of the rest of Western Europe, will be uh, carried along by this uh, decision that we're going to try and limit climate change. Now, action early to limit climate change is worth a lot more than action late. So, Andy McRae, let's turn to you first. How big a change is involved? I mean, what are we talking here? Um, well, whilst the finer points of the debate on climate change are very interesting, we're actually living through related issues as we speak. There's been a huge debate in the press recently about rocketing energy prices or seesawing energy prices. Mm -hmm. We're also uh, hearing about uh, security of supply for our fossil fuels. We in Northern Ireland depend almost entirely on imported fossil fuels. So what can we do? We can actually invest heavily in renewable energy. What we're talking about here is an energy policy for the next 10 or 20 years, and that will define what Northern Ireland actually looks like at that time. What will our lives be like? How will we lead them? You know, what, what will our schools and our children, what jobs will we get? And this is all enshrined in our energy policy. And by investing heavily in a renewable energy policy, we can help improve the situation as regards stability of energy costs and also um, fuel security. We can take those issues into our own hands. Let's go to our friends the Green Party here in the front row. What do you think then of the Minister's approach? Is it too costly? Well, I mean, I have to congratulate UTV. They, we, we can get Sammy Wilson and we've got somebody else who uses the same method of getting their argument across. I'll talk over everybody else and, 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 and therefore I'll speak the loudest and, and the most often. We and have that's to get all sides. Win. Well, you know, well, fair play it is for that. But um, no, certainly not. Um, <laughs> But I, I think, I mean, I think we're making a lot of important decisions now. Um, you know, as Andy says, at the minute we can make a choice to go forward for renewables. Unfortunately, at the minute we're not making that choice. Now, there's a number of issues. We can talk about climate change. It's an important issue. But when you look at renewable energy technology, it actually tackles a number of issues. Today, fuel poverty was being discussed in the Assembly. Previous to this Assembly getting elected, we were putting solar panels in housing executive homes. There was a fund for that. People's fuel bills were being reduced. Now that we have an executive that, in our opinion, isn't doing enough in, in terms of promoting renewable energy, there is no fund for that for the housing executive anymore. We, it, it was the, the, the fund. The fund was cancelled, and and therefore we are actually doing something proactive for the environment, for people who are suffering fuel poverty. And the third thing is we were also creating jobs in a renewable industry in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. We're actually assembling wind turbines in Harland and Wolf. We're keeping that industry alive through wind energy. If we can increase that demand, we can create, I think there was, <coughs> there was a report done that said we can create four and a half thousand jobs in mm -hmm. Northern Ireland alone. Andy.